Hi, my name's Alyssa and I'm Brightly's Always Lifestyle Expert. If you're into sustainability, subscribe down below, become a change maker. But other than that, let's get started. I'm exposing myself again. The other week I also exposed myself by talking about the things, the swaps I thought I would never make but ended up absolutely loving. I'll link that down below. But this week I'm actually talking about things that I thought were sustainable and that I did. Uh, but really, in the grand scheme of things, probably was not the best and most eco-conscious option. So hopefully, if you're not new to your journey, you can relate to this and these mistakes. If you are new, I hope you can learn something and pick up a little piece of advice here or there. But let's get started, because I got some things to tell you. Number one is buying from fast fashion companies, Eco Lines. So we all know it, the infamous H&M Conscious Collection. I bought from that collection. This was at the very beginning of my sustainability journey. I used to love clothes a lot and now I actually don't buy them often at all. But H&M was a place I shopped. I had friends that worked there and I really enjoyed going there a long time ago. You know, with the job I was working at the time, it was a really great price point for me. It was kind of all I was doing. And besides thrifting, it was some of the best prices around. So when I went to go switch my closet, my bathroom products in my closet were some of the first things I started to swap by living a more sustainable lifestyle. And I was doing a lot of thrifting, but it was hard for me to thrift my size and my style just because of my area. It just, you know, it depends on where you live. And I didn't really understand online thrifting yet. I actually don't even know if I knew it was a thing. So I remember seeing the H&M Conscious Collection and getting really excited because it was a place I was already super comfortable shopping. I knew it would fit me. I knew my size there. But I bought something. I'm pretty sure it was a top. Like I think I bought literally one top from it. But I did it and I really thought like I was like oh my gosh my first piece of sustainable fashion. And the thing is is that compared to buying a standard H&M product, compared to their conscious collection or something similar, yes, it is a better option. If you really do have trouble with thrifting, yes, that is a better option. But uh, was it the most sustainable option for me? Probably not because I, one, didn't need more clothes. I, two, probably could have thrifted. The, the top I got was like a pretty plain white top. I really could have thrifted that in my area. And I, I don't know what was going through my head that I was like, oh, I need that. And now my stance would probably be if I really couldn't find something my size, I was in a pinch, I really, really wanted something, I would try to go to like some kind of local anything, local boutique, local something before I went to the H&M Conscious Collection. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty common thing to run into, especially when you're new to sustainable fashion. And sustainable fashion is very complex. And sometimes, you know, those companies making those small changes can be great for people. But I know I had the means to get that top in a different way, in a more ethical way, and I probably actually didn't need it at all. So that's why I say it wasn't the most sustainable choice for me. Number two is buying beauty products that said all natural. Now, I actually don't even know if I would say I cared a lot about sustainability in the way I do now when I did this. This was a long time ago. Like I've been doing this since I was really like very young. I was drawn to products that were green and said all natural because I thought they were gonna clear my acne I had or fix my damaged hair I had. I really thought these products were gonna do me good but really they did the exact opposite. They just worked like any other product and they were all, all of them were packaged in plastic that I can even think of that I used to use. But that's a very normal routine to a lot of people is having your whole routine be packaged in plastic. That's so standard when you go to the store, that is what you're surrounded by. So I thought that choosing the green bottle that said all natural meant that it was actually all natural and that I was doing something good for me and for the planet. But really the term all natural is super unregulated. You can kind of put that on a lot of different things and it not really mean anything. Number three is over thrifting. Now I will have a video coming out soon about how to avoid impulse buying, so stay tuned for that. Whenever I decided that my consumption was unethical for what I had the means to do, I tried to switch my focus to secondhand and thrifting, but my mistake was I was still over consuming just secondhand items. So over consumption is over consumption to me, whether it's secondhand or not. So my problem was I was going out and I was thrifting these things now because everything was suddenly so cheap, so accessible. So I was going out and thrifting all these things that I absolutely did not need and did not have a place for and did not even like. But yeah, stay tuned, subscribe so we can talk about impulse buying and how to not do that for yourself, for your wallet, for the planet. And to go along with that, number four, I was over testing products 
as well. So I was trying out all different kinds of sustainable brands, and this is mostly personal care, self-care products. And I had this like sudden stash of new products and I was getting rid of my old ones to try out these new things. Really what I should have done is finish up my old products completely before I bought my new ones. And I preach that all the time now, but I will admit when I first started my journey, I definitely threw, I can think of a couple things away so that I could buy the more sustainable version, which now I totally regret doing. Number five is buying locally. So it's different everywhere, but in my area, there is a pretty good selection of small businesses to shop and to visit and to choose from. And I'm a very hyper local person. I love local businesses. I love supporting them. I love seeing them, I love seeing new ones. And as much as I love them, I also did have to recognize throughout my sustainable journey that just because it's a small business and a local business does not automatically make it sustainable. And I had to distinguish that because there are a lot of great benefits of supporting small, local, sustainable businesses that is like, the peak, the most amazing thing ever. But when we're talking small and local, not sustainable, you have to realize the only reason why their impact seems so small is because they are physically smaller. So if I need something that, you know, I need in a pinch or unsustainable or I can only find otherwise at like a Walmart or something like that, if I can get it local first, Absolutely I will. But on top of getting it local first is also getting it sustainably first. Number six is recycling. I truly thought I personally was gonna like recycle my way out of the climate crisis. Newsflash, I did not, did not work. Plan did not work. But what I would do is just recycle everything, which I mean, great, yes, recycle what you can. But I would also wish cycle. Wish cycling is when you basically recycle something without being 100% sure if it's supposed to be in the recycling bin. If you're not 100% sure, check your city's rules, call them, ask, email them. Other than that, you're probably doing more good by actually sending it to landfill, disposing of it properly, rather than just attempting to recycle this thing that might not even get recycled. It's also really tough to recycle cardboard and glass in my area. Not that we don't recycle it, we just don't recycle it curbside, so you have to collect it and drop it off somewhere. So at first in my sustainable journey, I always thought that buying plastic was best because for me, I can recycle plastic. But there's a lot more to that. So I was also supporting the manufacturing of virgin plastic and things like that along with just like being able to recycle it. So now I shifted my focus a little bit to try to buy things in aluminum or making it, you know, a point to collect that glass and cardboard and go drop it off rather than just sending it to landfill. So still recycle, absolutely. I just do it a little more responsibly. I don't do the wish cycling or anything like that. Number seven is thinking that certifications make for a sustainable brand. And we actually have an article talking about a lot of certifications that we love. I will link that down below so that you can browse that but in general there's a lot of weird unregulated certifications happening and there's a bunch of unregulated terms and you can just kind of put whatever you want on packaging it feels like sometimes so there's a few certifications I now trust but I'm telling you like if like I said with the all-natural thing if something was green and it told me it had some kind of claim I was buying it like I really thought that was like the peak of sustainability I can't even lie to you but yeah I think differently about certifications I still love them. I still think they're great. They're some of their favorites, but overall like certifications, I no longer think define whether a brand is solely sustainable or not. Well, that is it. I could probably do a part two for this. So if you want to see a part two, let me know because there's a lot, I made a lot of mistakes. So if you want to know about all my mistakes on my sustainable journey, definitely let me know in the comments. Talk about any you've personally made as well. I don't want to feel alone here, so drop some in the comments. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time.